What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So I know I said I wasn't making videos on Fridays, but I was filming videos for the course this morning, and uh, I just had an idea for a video that I wanted to make real quick about the Follow Me tool. So uh, the course, as most of you know, is the SketchUp Essentials course that I'm working on right now. Um, that releases on March 14th, and uh, you can get it for 40% off through 228, so February 28th. Um, but I was filming videos for it this morning, and I wanted to make this video. Oh, and more information on the course can be found at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I was filming um, one of the sections about the Follow Me tool, and I wanted to talk about a couple of the quick tips about this. And there's more information about using the Follow Me tool. Um, I'll link to some videos, but it's also going to be more information in the course itself. But so the first tip when using the Follow Me tool is don't drag your shape along a path. So when you activate the follow me tool, and this is a helix I drew with helix along curve, um, when you do this, don't click and drag or move your object along this path. You can definitely do this. You can see how when I click on this face, this turns red, and SketchUp lets me kind of drag it along this path. Um, and that works, but it's definitely more time consuming. Same thing over here if I do this kind of like tube shape. But um, so, so you don't want to try to drag this along this path because it's time consuming. What you want to do instead is you want to actually select the path by clicking on it and then activate the follow me tool and click on the face and SketchUp will automatically extrude that object along the face. So if I select this, come over here, click on this line. I actually don't want to select this object. So I want to select my complete path click on this face and it'll extrude it all the way along this path so don't drag. Um, tip number two is your objects don't need to be touching for this to work. So if I click and drag my mouse just like this and select this object, activate the follow me tool and click on this, you can see how I can extrude this using the path without actually being on the path. Um, so I could do the same thing with this circle object over here. I can click on this face activate the follow me tool and then click on this object right here and you can see how I was able to use this path to extrude this in a circle without actually um, having it touching. Um, actually I'm going to add another tip in here real quick and that tip is going to be you don't need to click on the edge of the path in order for this to work if you're using shapes. So you can just click on the face of the shape um, and SketchUp will automatically know that you want to use the perimeter of the shape as a path. So click on the face, activate follow me, click on your object and it'll be able to do that it'll be able to figure out what path based on your shape um, it wants to extrude objects along. Um, the next tip is use circular shapes to create like lathed objects. So in this case I would click on this face, activate the follow me tool, kind of lathe this in a circle. So you can see how not only can you use this to follow paths, you can also use this to spin an object to create a shape. Um, so next tip is play around with the shapes that you're actually extruding things along. So in this case, like I have the same profile that I had over here. I'm going to reverse this just so you can see it a little bit better. But in this case, instead of a circle, I have a square. And when I use the follow me tool on this, you can see how that creates a different shape over here. So it creates a different style of a stair baluster than you'd have over here. So play around with the shapes that you're actually extruding things along, especially in this circular mode. And then finally, I want to talk about being aware of your polygons when you're doing this. So I have three examples of the same situation, but each one of these has a different number of segments in the circles that I'm extruding. So in this case, if I click on this circle, these circles both have 12 edges or 12 segments making up their edges. This one has 24, so it's smoother. This one has 72, so it's going to be the smoothest of the three. But if I click on this circle that I've placed right here, activate the follow me tool, and then click on this, I'm going to go ahead and turn hidden geometry on. You can see how this creates a circle that's very choppy. It has larger faces, and so it doesn't necessarily look super good, but it's super lightweight. And one thing to note is if you like zoom way out, you might not be able to see it anyway. So it's something to consider to make your models smaller. So this one, if I do the same thing, activate the follow me tool, you can see how this has a lot more shapes in it. So if I click and drag across this first one, it'll tell me there's 217 entities. This one, if I click and drag across it, there's 865 entities. So you can see 
this is a much smoother circle and this might be a better way to go but it's still if you zoom in it's a little bit choppy because it's made up of these little segments and then for the last one if I use the follow me tool on that one you can see how that has a lot more geometry it's a very smooth circle but when you zoom out and you turn hidden geometry off you can't really tell the difference between this one and this one and so if I was to triple click in here and select all of the geometry you can see how this has 7,000 entities so just be aware of the way that you use polygons in your model to make things look smoother but also to balance that with the number of stuff that the amount of stuff that SketchUp's going to have to render that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. I know I said I wasn't going to be making videos on Fridays, but I thought this would be a good one. Um, some really good principles about using the Follow Me tool. If you want more information about the tools in SketchUp, a lot of that's going to be contained in my course, which you can get more information about at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. And again, um, until February 28th, you're going to be able to get 40% off of that course. So if you're interested in some more in-depth instruction, great, go check that out. If not, I hope this video was helpful to you, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.